Khatu Shyam Baba is revered as the Lord of Kali Yuga and is worshipped in the regions of Western India, especially in Rajasthan. Khatu Shyam was born as the mighty King Barbarik. He is synonymous with Lord Krishna and thus is worshipped in the same form. Barbarik, also known as Khatu Shyam or Shyam Baba, was the grandson of the brave prince Bhim, the second of the Pandava brothers. He was the son of Ghatotkach, sired by Bhima through one of his wives, Jagdamba. He was more powerful than the combined powers of Bhima, Arjuna, Bhishma, Karna, Dronacharya and other valiant warriors of the Mahabharat. Even in his childhood, Barbarik was a very courageous warrior. He learned the art of warfare from his mother. Pleased with his skills, Lord Shiva gave him three divine infallible arrows. Later, Agni, the god of fire, presented him with a bow that would make him victorious in the three worlds. When Barbarik came to know that the bitter battle between the Pandavas and the Kauravas was inevitable, he wanted to participate in the warfare. His mother agreed to let him to go to the war, but asked him before leaving as to which side he would join if he felt the urge to participate in the war. He promised his mother that if he felt the urge to participate in the war, he would join the side which would be losing. Touching his mother Jagadamba's feet, he then rode on his blue horse, equipped with three arrows and a bow. It is said that Barbarik was so powerful that the war could end in one minute if he alone was to fight in it. Lord Krishna knew about Barbarik's strengths. So before the Mahabharat began, Krishna asked the warriors how many days it would take for them to finish the war alone. Bhishma answered that he would take 20 days to finish the war. When Karna was asked, he said he would take 24 days. Arjuna said that it would take him 28 days to complete the battle all by himself. Krishna, having heard of Barbarik's willingness to fight and wanting to examine Barbarik's strength, disguised himself as a Brahmin and came in front of Barbarik. Krishna asked him the same question, to which Barbarik replied that it would take him only one minute to finish the opposing army if he were to fight them all alone. Krishna even tried to mock him, saying that he was going to the great battle and finish the war with only three arrows. Barbarik then replied that a single arrow was enough to destroy all of his opponents. He stated that the first arrow is used to mark all the things that he wanted to destroy. If he used the second arrow, it would mark all the things that he wanted to save. And on releasing the third arrow, it would destroy all the things that were marked by the first arrow. Upon doing its work, all the three arrows will then return to the quiver of Barbarik and will be preserved for his next use. Lord Krishna, eager to test the arrows, challenged Barbarik to tie all the leaves of the people tree under which he was standing. Barbarik accepted the challenge and started meditating with his eyes closed to release his arrow. Then Krishna, without Barbarik's knowledge, plucked one of the leaves of the tree and put it under his foot. When Barbarik released his first arrow, it marked all the leaves of the tree and finally started to revolve around the leg of Krishna. Bewildered, Krishna asked Barbarik why was the arrow revolving around his foot. Barbarik explained that there must be a leaf under his foot and that the arrow was trying to target it. Barbarik advised Krishna to move away if he did not want to get hurt. Krishna promptly lifted his foot and to his surprise found that the first arrow also marked the leaf that he had hidden under his feet. Of course, when the third arrow was finally released, it collected all the leaves including the one that was concealed under Krishna's foot and tied them all together. Krishna concluded that the arrows were infallible and blessed. However, this situation worried Lord Krishna. He also realized that on the real battlefield, in case Krishna wants to isolate the Pandavas 
to save them from Barbarik's attack, he would not be able to do so, as the arrows would go ahead and destroy the target if Barbarik intended to. Thus, Krishna gets a deeper insight into Barbarik's phenomenal power. Krishna then asked the boy whom he would favor in the war. Barbarik said that since the Kaurava army is bigger than the Pandava army, he would fight for the weaker side, which was the Pandavas. But to this, Lord Krishna explains the paradox of the situation. He explains, the moment Barbarik joins the weaker side, the side he is on becomes stronger and the opposing side becomes weaker. In this case, Barbarik would be changing sides again and again with no end as the side he is on will always be the stronger side and thus Barbarik will never be able to fulfill the promise that he made to his mother that he will fight for the weaker side. Krishna understood that it was necessary to keep Barbarik away from this war as this war was to prevail righteousness, a dharma yuddha. Krishna in the disguise of a Brahmin sought some charity from the youth and Barbarik promised him anything he wished for. Krishna then promptly asked him to give his head. Barbarik was shocked. He requested the Brahmin to disclose his real identity. Lord Krishna then showed Barbarik a vision of his divine form. He explained to Barbarik that before the battle, the head of the bravest Kshatriya needed to be sacrificed. He considered Barbarik to be the bravest amongst the Kshatriya warriors and hence had asked for his head in charity. In compliance with the Lord's command, Barbarik sacrificed his head to Krishna. He obtained a boon from Krishna to the effect that he would be known by one of Krishna's many names, Shyam. Krishna not only granted him the boon but also declared that Barbarik's devotees would be blessed and all their wishes granted by simply pronouncing his name from the bottom of their hearts. Barbarik's sacrifice happened on the twelfth day of the Shukla Paksh in the month of Falgun. Barbarik also requested that though he was laying down his skull, he still wanted to see the battle till its end and so his wish was granted. The head was placed on top of a hill overlooking the battlefield. When the battle was over, the victorious Pandava brothers argued amongst themselves as to who was responsible for the victory. At this, Lord Krishna suggested that Barbarik's head had watched the entire battle and he should be allowed to make a judgment on this. Barbarik's head submitted that it was Lord Krishna alone who was responsible for the victory as his advice, presence and game plan had been crucial. It is believed that some years after the battle of Kurukshetra, the head was retrieved from the holy pond that is located near the present Khatu Shyamji temple. A dip in this pond cures a person from all ailments and brings good health. Thus, during the fair held in the month of Falgun, pilgrims throng the pond from various places and take a dip to wash away their worldly sins. Today. There is a temple dedicated to Khatu Shyam Baba, also known as Barbarik in the Sikar district of Rajasthan. This temple was first built in 1027 AD by Roop Singh Chauhan. According to some versions, Khatu Shyam Baba appeared in the dreams of the queen of Roop Singh Chauhan named Narmada Kanwar. In 1720 AD, the then ruler of Marwar had the temple renovated. The Khatu Shyam idol is made of a rare stone and has been a family deity for a number of families for centuries. The temple is located approximately 19 kilometers away from Ringas, a place of worship for the Hindus.